Hey buddy, it's Crazy Good Time 4 and welcome back to some more Super Smash Bros for the 3DS. In the last one, we continue our classic mode run through uh, with the uh, with a returning Fire Emblem character, Ike. You know, got to see his differences, especially in appearance. Uh, so it's just really fun. I enjoyed that uh, playing that episode a lot. In this episode, however, we're gonna be playing through another Fire Emblem character. This time, a newcomer. Robin, the uh, the main protagonist of um, Fire Emblem, uh, technically the main protagonist, the, well, the, the main character that you play as in Fire Emblem Awakening. This is like the default customizable character. But one thing that's special about Robin is the fact that you can change genders, which is kind of crazy, or I guess not even genders, but sex. Um, you can change, uh, yeah, you can change between male and female Robin, which is really freaking cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out his, his or her, their, uh, alternate costume. So we have standard male Robin with the white hair, standard female Robin with the white hair. We have a green outfit, which resembles the overworld sprite for Mark, the customizable tactician from Fire Emblem the Blazing Blade. Uh, we have... Red Robin, as people call it in the Smash community, uh, which resembles Anna, a recurring shopkeeper in the Fire Emblem series, as she appeared in Fire Emblem Awakening. We have a blue outfit, which seems seems to be a Smash original. There might be some reference, but can't really find one. Uh, we have an orange outfit, which is which resembles Evo, Ivel from Fire Emblem 3 CS776. We have a white outfit with black hair, resembles the white mage class from Square Enix's Final Fantasy series, and a pink outfit which resembles Sarah from the Blazing Blade. So yeah, we're gonna be heading in with standard male Robin. Let's do it. Everyone like everyone in the Smash community is always like on about oh female Robin's the best. We're like even, not even just Robin. There's actually a, a few characters where like you can pick between male or female versions, um, and everyone's like oh yeah ma female's the best. Male sucks. It's like relax. Male's still good. I like I personally like male more. If I'm being honest, maybe because it's a default. I don't know. Um, there's another character which has a uh, later which has both male and female, where the female's the default, and I choose the female. Um, whenever I pick that character, so it's like, you know, it, it changes for me, but it seems like typically if it's If the default is the male Then if, whichever one's the default, that's the one I tend to if, typically pick and, uh, Whatever. Oh, yeah, but Robin so very interesting character this guy is or this this one is in the fact that uh, It's kind of a swordsman Because uh, Robin does have a sword that they use um, but they are primarily a mage character, as you can see. They rely a lot heavily on their mage abilities. Um, but of course do have a sword as a melee weapon if they so need it, uh, which actually comes in very handy, especially with like close range fighting. What's really interesting about Robin is that besides the fact that it's a uh, sword character, Robin also has two swords to work with. He has a standard bronze sword, which is not like, a, it's like a standard sword that he always has. It has very minimal KO potential, and since it does like low damage and low knockback and very bad reach, short lasting hits and minimal freeze frames. Um, yeah, uh, but it could also be like a good combo heavy sword. But he also has a second sword, which we showed off a little bit, uh, which is his 11 sword, which is a more electrical sword that he has. And that one he typically um, uses it for smash attacks or like strong aerials uh, that he would, you know, throw out. While bronze sword does like just like tilt attacks, more weaker attacks, general ones like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure neutral aerial is also like relying on the I think neutral is also a uh, bronze sword. It might also be 11 with that one. Damn, that was quick. Uh, but yeah, the 11 sword is really good. A lot more knockback, a lot more damage. Um, it has like electrical properties. So like if you hit an opponent, you know, it has some freeze frames to it. Um, yeah, there's like a, a lot. Let's go Wario. I don't know why. Um, and a lingering hitbox, so it's like if you like throw around an attack like a smash attack Even if it's like late the p opponent could still get hit by it because it just like lingers. It's cool. It, it's kind of cool I do like the way um, Robin works a lot. It's it's definitely a unique character. But let's go ahead and check out 
uh, Robin's special attack. So we have a standard, which is called Thunder, where Thunder is a chargeable attack, which has, I'm pretty sure, four different forms. Let me see, see if I can show them off. So this is a standard form, which is just Thunder. Yeah, here we go. Thunder, which he just kind of shoots out immediately. Let's, okay, well, hold on. We have the hammer real quick, so we might as well use this to our ability. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh my gosh, okay. Then we have... L Thunder. And then we have... Wait, hold up. Oh no! Oh, that's so stupid. Okay. So one of the... Oh, uh, that's good. There's a lot to go over with Robin. Hold up. I can't do anything! There we go, okay. I'll continue showing off the Thunder uh, versions, but it's like... One of the biggest issues with Robin is the fact that he has limits to his magic attacks. There's only a certain amount of times you can use them before they run out and you have to wait for them to recharge. He basically has a book for each of the spells, and in that book it's basically thrown out. And you can actually use that as a projectile for like a limited time. If you catch it quick enough, uh, which is pretty cool, but yeah. His magic attacks run out, and you gotta be really careful of that. Let me try it. Okay, this would be Arc Thunder. Which is a multi-hitting attack, but obviously Falcon's stubborn as heck, and he didn't get hit by it. Then we have his final one! Which, let me see if I can show this one off. We showed it off briefly. Uh, did I- I have a charge. This is called Thoron, which is a, a lot stronger uh, version of the move. Um, it's- it's very good. Uh, it's very, very good. Has a lot of range, lingers around for a bit, and just does a lot more damage knockback. A lot of the time, the Arc Thunder is actually, like, Sun is a better option, just because it, you know, it's a little slow, it's a little less, like, predictable compared to the Thoron, and it does, like, that heavy, uh, nasty, like, multi-hit that Thoron doesn't have. I, although, I think Thoron actually does do, like, a multi-hit, and I don't know. But yeah, so, that's, that's the move, you know, that's, there's a lot to his, um, his thunder. Uh, now we got his side special, which we'll show off real quick. This is called the Arc Fire. Arc fire, where he just kind of throws out some fire, uh, like a like a flame wall from his book, and uh, at at, a, at an angle, and it goes down, and then hits an opponent. If it hits, well, even either it hits an opponent or it hits the ground, it will still like initiate. And what's really good is that if an opponent gets into the attack, they will get trapped for like a second and then shoot out. So you can like kind of, you know, it's a really good like combo move that you can use. So like you do arc fire and then like go into like a, uh, a really good aerial attack. So, yeah. Damn, I just went freaking bouncing for a second there. That was insane. <laughs> I went so crazy. Um, but yeah, you know, not a bad move. It's a good move to like disrupt opponents, yada yada. Good air dodging. Oh, sorry. Um... Not air dodging, what's it called? Good, uh... Ledge, uh, guarding move. So... Yeah, not, not a bad move at all. I like that one a lot. Arc fire, very, very, uh, useful. Has a little explosion at the end, so... Alright, and now we have his up special, which we showed off a little bit. This one's called Elwind, where he casts wind magic twice below himself from the Elwind tome, and then it propels him into the air. That's how it works. He has a little bit of like horizontal movement with it. Not like a crazy amount, but like a little bit that he can do. Uh, what's interesting about the um, the Elwyn is that the first hit can actually meteor smash aerial opponents if he hit, if they are like directly underneath him. Um, but then the late hits could then set up the late hit of the the move can set up for. Um, can set up for the second hit, which then launches opponents too far to counterattack Robin. So, you know, he, he's got some... It's kind of a safe... To an extent, it could be a, a sort of safe um, move to use with Robin, a safe recovery move. As you can see, that, that's pretty good. Oh, okay, that just... I think that spiked actually a little bit there, yeah. That's kind of like how Elwyn works. Um, Again, one thing you gotta keep in mind, because his tomes, ha his spells have uh, limits to them, at one point, Elwind will not be able to be used for a little bit of time because you will be using it too much, and then it will go away. So then he basically won't be able to recover for a certain amount of time. Uh, but it's only for like six seconds, but it's still, it's, it's still a lot. Um, so you need to be very careful of that. And then finally, the last one, Really sucks because we can't freaking show this one off until like the Master Shadow. Um, 
but this one is called the Nosferatu, where it basically grabs into an opponent with the Nosferatu, as you see a little bit. And, um, and yeah, using the move will basically trap the opponent. They have to be, like, kind of close, because it's actually a very short range attack. Uh, but if you were to trap an opponent in the move, it will end up, uh, you will end up being able to essentially take damage from the opponent, um, but also heal yourself in the meantime, which is really, really cool. It's kind of like a double, double kind of hitter right there. You do damage, and you also heal on top of it, which I feel like is very, very freaking useful. And I will, again, we'll show it off, uh, when we get to the Master Shadow, because we can't really show it off right now, but yeah. And it's a move, it's kind of like a grab, where it's like, victims will be able to um, mash out of the move to get out of there quicker. Uh, but still, you know, that's how it works. It's a, it's a really, it's a good move. It is. As long as you can like hit off, or hit it off, um, you just gotta be careful because it just, it does not have good range. That's one of the biggest issues with it. It really, it really is bad in terms of range. But yeah, the sword is doing a lot. The Levin sword, it's a crazy freaking good move. It's like you want to use the Levin Sword as much as you as much as you can. Sure, the Bronze Sword, this is the standard one I'm using, is what is technically better for combos. Um, but like the Levin Sword, if you just want the the bare strength and knockback and everything, the Levin Sword is like so goaded. It just got you gotta be careful because it's you know it only lasts a certain amount of time. Oh, I messed up there. Also, even if you don't like hit the opponent with the move or with the Levin Sword but you still use it, it will, you know, continue to be, like, run out. So you need to be care kind of careful of that. Come on, there's the Levin Sword. Bam! Nice! Look at that damage, it's so good. Let me see if I can hit off the Thoron real quick. Here we go. Boom! The Thoron, nice. Alright, Nosferatu, let's see if we can show it off. Grabs the opponent, yep. And as I'm doing damage to him, I am gaining health back. So, or I guess in this case, I'm lowering my percentage. It's a very, uh, you know, I mentioned, oh, he's not doing it to me, okay. Relax, buddy. You're, not, you're crazy. Ooh, well, let me see if I can spike him. That'd be kind of insane. Let me see if I can also, like, show off a little bit of arc fire stuff. So, like, you can set up the arc fire, and then go straight into, like, the Levin Sword, which I'm really bad at doing, apparently. Hold up. Boo! come on, nice. Oh, it's gonna be it's really tough to like, do stuff to him. Well, maybe you can kill with the Nosferatu. That'd be crazy. Oh no, my book is gone. Never mind. We're not doing. We're not killing with that. Ooh, we spike with the Uppy. Let's go. Oh, that's so crazy. I never spike with that, but we actually did. Damn, nice. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, but yeah, there's Robin. There is Robin. Um, again, a pretty freaking cool character. Pretty cool, very unique, very unique, kind of said the same thing with Palutena, but like, again, it's true. Very, very unique of a character, I will say that. Um, so it's like, you know, character that if you if you know how to use, well, he's got like some issues to him, that's for sure, which makes him a little weak, uh, you know, to some extent. But if you know how to use a character well, he could be extremely good. I will say that. He could be like a very, very scary one to go up against, for sure, for sure. But there we have it. That's that's about it. Um, yeah. Oh, the two moves. Soaring Elwind and Thunder Plus. Yeah, huh. Okay, not bad. We got two new moves of Robin. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, credits. Let's see what happens with Robin. Um, but yeah, that whole like durability system with like his tomes and his Levin sword, it's an interesting ability. It's cool to see it, but it does become a sort of detriment to Robin uh, from time to time, especially when it happens at like the worst possible scenarios. I mean, maybe if you're like really, really good at using Robin and like you've memorized his stuff and everything, um, like you, you've perfected Robin gameplay, then maybe you can like kind of just minimize the detriment a lot. You could like kind of have the tomes run out, the 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 system just have your stuff break at like times where it's like you don't need to use them, where you won't be like left in a pickle. 
So, I mean, maybe, yeah. What's, what, what's really nice about Ultimate, actually, I really want to mention this, um, is that with Ultimate, Robin got a lot better. I think overall Robin's still the same, but one of the reasons why I feel like he definitely got better in Ultimate is the fact that his tomes now are able to, like, have a bar to them. So you can actually see how much more of each tome, and even the Eleven Sword itself, you can see how much of everything you have remaining. So then you know exactly like when to watch out for like the breakage of, of each uh, of each tome or, or the sword, which is nice. It's super super freaking helpful. My gosh, it's so helpful. Oh, this is a good move for for this. Look at that. That's pretty damn good. Nice. Didn't expect that. It also has like a third op a second option where it's like an explosion at the end. It's like you don't match it. You just kind of like. You just, just like do that simple one, two, three. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's uh, it, you know, how am I trying? To, I'm, I'm like talking nonsense right now. I'm sorry. I, I like lost. I lost train of thought. But yeah, so you know, it, again, the braking system is annoying. Uh, if you know how to like get around it, then like do that because it's it, it can be bad. Uh, but ultimate really like fixed it up a little bit, where you can kind of at least have some leeway into like knowing when it's gonna break and whatnot. But there we go, we have Krom in the uh, picture. That might give us a little bit of a hint to uh, his last move, his last big move, which we'll see in a moment. We'll go into trading mode real quick. I will people out. So, Robin, let's check you out real quick. So, Robin's taunt and final smash. Um, I don't remember what it is, actually. Let's see. So, taunt. I feel so stupid. I don't even know what the heck that was. Go back in. Man, I'm like messing things up left and right right now. Goodness me. Okay, so, Robin. Taunts. Up taunt. Let's hit the, the scales. Let's tip the scales. Nice. We have the side taunt. He has another prepare yourself, like like Ike does. Prepare this one, he actually like kind of like throws around his, his bronze sword in his book. And his down taunt. You're not ready yet while kind of trolling around everything, and he's like definitely a sorcerer right there. And then of course we have his final smash, which is called Pair Up. So yeah, that's the move. He pairs a Krom just like gets summoned out of nowhere uh, via warp magic, and then they pair up an attack. So. Yeah, that was pretty cool to see. They could just kind of pair up, have a kind of a barrage attack like uh, like Ike's final smash. But this one actually dashes forward a bit, so it's got a little bit of like um, of range to it, which is nice. Um, and yeah, and then obviously they slam down and yada yada. It also kind of works the same if Ike, if like if someone gets caught in it, they will take uh, damage. And if they are like underneath the attack when they like both slam down, they will also take damage from that. So. You know, and a respectable, like, what, 45% damage that was? So not bad, not bad. As you KO, wait. It KOs at 45% and also fully rep- Oh, so that's actually useful. It fully replenishes all of Robin's weapons. That's nice to know. I actually did not know that prior to just now, so that's pretty cool. The more you know, I guess. Find out something new every day. Okay, Robin, let's check out your trophy. This is the male Robin, your avatar in Fire Emblem Awakening. The goal of this adventure doesn't change much because of your gender choice, but Robin's marriage options do. In Smash Bros, Robin brings powerful magic and sword play to bear. He can exhaust his moves, but they'll be restored over time. So yeah, that's Robin. Um, kind of giving you a little bit of like how he works in the, uh, or how they work in the actual games. I was like, apparently only ma only the marriage options change, so. Very important, uh, you know, part of Fire Emblem, I guess. But yeah, that's it for Robin. That was a good episode. It was pretty cool to like just see a character just like Robin and and how how he how he works um, in Smash. But yeah, so thank you all so much for watching today's episode of Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS. In the next one, we'll be continuing Classic Mode by going through with a classic character, a really classic character, uh, one of the original eight from the first Smash game, that being Kirby. Our favorite pink puffball. This is gonna be a good episode, I feel. So, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Social media, including the Twitch, the second channel, the music channel, and the VOD channel, is all down below in the description. And I'll see everyone in the next one. Pop Tart out.